Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and welcome back to another rapid fire critique where I take 10 of your best photos and give them a critique. Ema Critiquerson, if you'd like to submit your best 10 photos, send them over to bit.ly slash fro critiques. And this video is brought to you by Froback One. Go to froknowsphoto.com slash presets to check those out. So here we have photos by Luca Pontarelli, not Fonzarelli, but Luca Pontarelli from Chicago. Chicago, the Bears. The Bears are playing the football. All right, so this is the first image. We are shooting it with the Sony, I believe it's an A7 III. Now it gives me no lens information, which leads me to believe, oh, photo taken with the 50 millimeter Minolta RD, exactly. It's taken with an, a lens that is adapted to this camera. That's why it's not giving me that information, which leads me to believe that it was uh, manually focused. So this image right here, I like what's going on with the sun. Oh, I didn't even notice that there's a building here and this looks to be, that looks to be dust on the sensor, which leads me to believe it was a higher aperture also because it's at ISO 100, one, oh God, one, oh my Jesus. That says one twenty-fifth of a second, which means absolutely it was at like F22 if I had to guess and that's why that dust and dirt is showing up in the camera. What I like about the image are the shadow lines that are running through causing this V to happen. I like that. What I don't like is the processing. I don't think it's contrasty enough and I do think a black and white could have been better for an image like this. I think with a little bit of contrast, it would tighten it up and make it pop just a little more. It's on the flat side. Now flat may be good for some of you out there. That may be your personal way of editing. For me, most of my stuff, 99.18.7% of it, is not on the flatter side. But again, personal preference on this stuff. And if you disagree with the critique, leave comments down below. Nothing wrong with that. Let's all learn together. Ooh, this is cool in Chicago. This is at 1 of, sorry, 1 640th of a second, 200 ISO. Uh, the same thing. So this one's in focus. This is nice. I think that this could benefit from black and white. Uh, I don't think that you would lose too much. I know there's a lot of shadow area, dark area, stuff in the shadows down here in the shade, but my focus goes to the CTA up here, the Chicago TA, whatever that stands for. I would be curious to see this in black and white. Uh, my black and white Boomify as a preset would be a little too harsh for this, but I would go black and white, I would pump up the contrast, and then I'd move those white levels up, not worrying about blowing out the background, because there's really not much to blow out here because the sky is all gray. So I think you could get away with a nice black and white image and really make it go pop. So I was just thinking that it would be good if I could take this into Lightroom and show you myself, and then I saw that I could download the full res image. Now it's not a raw file, but I'm gonna pop it in the Lightroom and just show you what I'm talking about instead of just telling you. So even though I'm editing the JPEG, we're gonna go black and white on this and we're gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and take it and see if it looks any better. Now yeah, this is a quick little edit going on here. Uh, I kinda wanna make it bright, but I kinda wanna make it contrasty to see what I think about it. So there, that's, that, that's the black and white, that's the color. I don't mind the hazy, like the, the way the color is here. Let me just do something real quick. I'm gonna take a snapshot and I'm gonna reset this to, to where they had it. I wanna see if any contrast would change this or if any color changes we could do with the white balance. Now normally I would be doing this with the raw file but because I have a full res file here I can make it work. So I don't mind that. I see the difference between the hazy thing and I also don't mind the super black and white. I don't think it's, you know, after editing it in black and white, don't think it's that great uh, because there's a lot of things in focus. It's not just the train in focus or something else. Maybe if there was a, well, I can't say, like there is a person over here, but really it, it kind of gets lost and it's all jumbled now that I go ahead and edit that one. So moving on to the next one, this was taken at 1 500th of a second, ISO 400, which, I find hard to fathom underground and that's why it looks so grainy because I think this image had to be brought back quite a bit because it was super underexposed. There's no way in hell, even at 1.4, that this would be 1 500th of a second at ISO 400 in the subway area. Um, not just because this image is underexposed, actually that's a person there, I didn't even realize that, but it's just, in terms of symmetry it's fine, but overall it's just a, 
a blah-ish image. It's not really one that stands out. Now, this is nice. I like what's going on here, and I'm going to explain that. Uh, one two fiftieth of a second at ISO 1250. I like all the chairs and the people that are kind of silhouetted because they're exposing for outside, yet you still have some light on the inside. You know there's a person at the piano, you know there's a person here that's either singing or playing a violin or the skin flute. I don't know what they're playing. Maybe it's the skin flute, which I don't know how that actually sounds. Probably doesn't sound good because there's only one hole. Now with one, anyway, this is, I don't, I don't mind this. I like the, the symmetry. I like what's going on. It's subtle. It's muted. And this is where I don't think a contrasty edit would look better. <sighs> this is just not in focus anywhere. Uh, I mean, maybe that pigeon is in focus somewhere, but this is just, this is a snapshot and there's not much else to say. What could make it better? I mean, black and white would hide some things because people tend to take and convert things to black and white to hide issues. But in, then if you're talking to yourself and you're going, well, if I'd like to hide some issues, then there's definitely an issue with the picture and you probably should consider not using it. And in this case, just because the birds are flying, the pigeons are flying, I don't think there's any, oh, I could read about it. I forget they have that. Photo taken with the, the Minolta. Oh, 1.7 lens, yeah. So I just don't. The manual focus wasn't kicking on this one, wasn't working. So this is an image that I would love to edit, and let's see if we can do this. View sizes, I wanna to go to original. So I'll go ahead and drag that to the desktop, and let's go ahead and put that into Lightroom. So here's the image, let's go and develop it. I like this shot. This is definitely one where I could see going black and white. I just think it, it just resonates so much better in black and white. You want to be very careful. I mean, we're just editing the JPEG here, but this is where the focus is. It should be on this kid right here. And I know the chalk is colored, um, color chalk, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on the color of the chalk because it's not as important. I just think this is where the, ba the background is distracting. Go like this. The background's not as distracting, and we're going to focus on this kid right here, right in the front. Okay? So that's what I'm seeing right there. Bring up the shadows a little bit on this. Contrast is already maxed out, and that's honestly what I would do with it. I just think that that makes for a better image than the color one. The color's lacking. The black and white gives it some, in my opinion, some classic street photography feel, and that's what I like to see is that thick contrast, and that's why I wanted to go ahead and edit that image right there. So let's just go back here and wrap up this critique, see how many more images we have. Moving on to the next bad boy. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Uh, I could see black and white working on this one again, but I do like the subtle nature of the color because you're looking through the subway doors or the elevated platform doors. Uh, actually, there's two of them. There's one here and one there. I do like that. I like the natural frames. This is an image that draws me in. Even, I almost said even if you select crop it and do like a square on Instagram, it could still work. Uh, but I like this. I would like to see a black and white option as well because I don't think the color adds to it. Sometimes color adds to the image, I mean most of the time, but other times black and white can just speak to you because what people go, how do you decide to go black and white versus color? And it's honestly just the feel. Sometimes an image just goes, hey, I want to be black and white. It's like, Jared, make me black and white. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, okay, that works. Sometimes it doesn't work. But in a lot of cases, just go with that feeling. If you feel it should be black and white, go with it. This is a snapshot. It's nice and straight, the lines are straight, but there's really not much going on. It's fine, it's okay. Uh, what does it mean? Photo taken with the 50, okay, I get it. You're taking it with the 50 again. It's, it's nice and straight, I like the lines, but there's really not much I can add to it. It's a nice cityscape, to be honest with you. I mean, even though it's, I mean, distant, it's not any high rises, it's okay. This is just a bartender dumping some stuff. Uh, I, I, again, more of the muted edit. So I guess that's your style, which is perfectly fine. Um, I like this person working here. I like this person pouring. Composition-wise, it, it's pretty good. Again, I think a black and white could be interesting, but I don't mind the muted nature of this one at all. So I'm okay with that. Uh, this is the last image. Meh. Meh. I can see in post-processing this was really overexposed uh, and definitely was brought back uh, with, the, with the highlights because I can totally see that's what happens when you do highlights in Lightroom. It's okay. 
really, I, I think maybe horizontal, getting more of the, the vehicles in it would be good. Unless I'm missing something about this image in terms of this building meaning something with blurry cars in front of it, it's just more of a snapshot. Um, Overall, not bad. I, I like the direction of the street photography, even knowing that this photographer is using most likely an adapted manual lens on this camera. Um, I think they did a very nice job. Now, my recommendation to you, if you're the photographer that took these and listening, try to process some of these black and white. Your street photography could do really well as black and whites. Now, I know that's a lot of my own opinion, but if you do agree, let me know down, down below. And if you don't agree, well, let me know down below. And if you haven't checked out FroPack 1 just yet, go to fronosphoto.com slash presets, where you can get a preview with sliders of all 14 of the presets and you can add it to your cart, get 40% off right now for 30 bucks only. You can get FroPack 1. Keep in mind, they only work on RAW files in the latest versions of Lightroom. Now, when I say latest, 7.5 or newer. If you have Creative Cloud, you're good to go. So let me know what you think. Leave some comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and that's it. Get your critiques in. Uh, bit.ly slash fro critiques. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.